Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and on today's video, oh my goodness, I have the cutest project ever to share with you. Super easy, chances are you have some of this stuff just hanging out at home that you can use, um, and it's quick, and anyway, super fun. So, I hope you'll stay with me to the very end because I have two different ways to mount these trees that we're going to be making and i'm going to show you all about that one of them is kind of different kind of a surprise okay so as you're hopping on say hello i'd love to know who's here watching whether you're live or on replay um, let me know if you have any questions along the way feel free to sprinkle 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 hello to all my youtube fans too thank you guys so much for watching um okay so this is one that I've made, one set. Here's another little one that I made. This one, I just had the inspiration and I put it together this morning. And then this is the one that I made yesterday. And I have another one over here. So we're gonna be making stuffed trees. And I'm going for more of a kind of neutral look. We'll be, let me move these out of the way. We will be using some canvas duck fabric. Mine came from Walmart. I love this stuff. If you've watched DIY Dreaming for any amount of time, you know that I use this like several times every week. It's just so great to work with. And there's so many things that you can do with this. So this is canvas duck fabric. You can get it everywhere. I usually get mine at Walmart. It's under $6 a yard. I get it in the fabric department in case you want to go look. We're also going to fiddle around with a little bit of this. This is um, quilt batting. And I picked this up at Walmart as well. It's just this creamy, soft, oh, I just love this stuff. Okay, and then just for fun, we're gonna fiddle around. Well, I'm gonna show you what I did fiddling around with a little bit of this red and cream striped ticking fabric, also from Walmart. And you guys, the reason why I shop at Walmart so much for my fabric and craft supplies is because it's like one mile from my house. Otherwise, I would be all over the map but it's just easy. So, so all of these fabrics can be found at any fabric store, whether that's Joann's, Hobby Lobby, or whatever local fabric stores that you have. Good morning, Wendy. Thank you so much. Hi, Tammy. Hey, Martha. So, okay, in addition to those, we are going to be using just some random stuff that I have hanging around. Um, I love everything vintage. Okay, so I have some of these I purchased. Some of these you guys sent me. These pieces of little crocheted like tablecloths and doilies. Here's another one. Some of them are in not great shape. They kind of yellow over age, but I like that. So I have a bunch of different ones to work with. We're also going to possibly be using a little bit of this lace that you can get on a roll. I think I got this at Hobby Lobby. Um, we may also use some of this lace. I'm just going for this creamy color. We may use some of this. Isn't this fun? I love this stuff. And you know what? This came from, uh, from my Goodwill. I stumbled on it one day when I was thrift shopping. I'll pull this little piece out though, because I think I will. And then we may play with some of this. I mean, there's so many different fun trims and different, I just have all kinds of little bits and pieces of vintage things and then trims. Okay, so, I mean, my point here is really just that you can use whatever you have. And this whole idea can be adapted to any color scheme, any style that you personally like. Um, all right, so let me give myself a little bit of room. 
Okay, so before I came live, um, I cut out and I did not use a pattern. I just folded my fabric in half and cut like a an elementary school level tree. That's one shape. Some of them I cut just straight. This one is one side of that cotton, uh, that canvas stuck fabric, the other side of the um, quilt batting, okay? So we are going to embellish, close, and fluff, and then I'll show you the poles. Um, these also came from Walmart. This is what we're using, wooden round dowels. These are thin enough also that you can cut them. And oh, I forgot to mention, we'll probably be playing with some buttons. I have a ton of vintage buttons. My favorites are the Mother of Pearl, but you could use current, you know, modern buttons. Um, okay, now stay with me to the very end because one of my surprise things is going to shock you. And it's a way to make a base for a tree. It really is. Okay, so let me get my little cake board that we're going to be crafting on. And let's do, let's do this one first, okay? This is the tree that I cut out. They're all different lengths. I know you're going to, someone's going to ask. And you know what? I'm rearranging my craft room, so I'm not sure where anything is at the moment. But these can be absolutely any height. You could make these big. Like I'm thinking I might want to make um, a set of three really big ones to set on the hearth at Christmas time. What do you guys think about that idea? Okay, so this one right here is eight and a half inches tall. This one right here is nine and a half inches tall. This one is six and a fourth inches tall. So the point here is you can do these absolutely whatever size you want. I do think it's nice when they have a little variety in height, width, and shape. Okay, so let's decorate the front, which I'm gonna have this be the front. This is that quilt batting. And I didn't say this yet, but if these comments right here are in your way, you should be able to swipe, if you're watching on Facebook, you should be able to swipe them left or right or up or down, okay? Hey, and also, I wanted to encourage you guys, if you like this project, I mean, I love it, but if you like this project, please sprinkle, 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 because I think your friends are gonna like it too. And the thing is, it just requires stuff. You can swap out whatever you have at home to do this project. Um, you can even swap out the stuffing with plastic bags, so. Okay, so let's cover this. Now, I did one like this. This is it, and I'm holding it close because I want you to see the back of it is the canvas stuck, and the front of it underneath this doily is the same quilt batting, okay? So I was kind of thinking this will fit. Yes, it will. Let's use some of this lace. And I just think it looks good to have a variety of different, uh, you know, all creams, unless you want to do the, that red, the ticking look, and you could do it in red and white, blue and white, or even the, the cream color, which looks like this. You could even do it in this. And that fabric is also from Walmart, in case you want to look. Okay, so what I did to attach my lace to the front of my pieces is super simple. I mean, super, super simple. I just took my low temperature hot glue gun. This is a Sure Bonder. You can get these everywhere. This is what it looks like if you're new. It's nothing fancy. I am, I think I am going to break down and invest in something that's cordless because this cord is driving me crazy. But, and I'm cleaning it off with a um, dryer sheet, just in case you're wondering. Um, so this low temperature hot glue gun is called a Sure Bonder. You can get it at Walmart for under $10 and you even get some of the sticks. 
Why do I use this? I use it because I don't like getting burned. Do you? <laughs> Probably not. And this seems to, feels to me like it's even a little bit lower than a low temperature hot glue gun. And when you're working on quilt batting, I don't know why it is, but this stuff, when you put hot glue on it, it gets smoking hot. Okay, I'm looking for my fingers. I'll tell you what those are in just a second. Here we go. Okay, these are those little finger protector things that you can buy at Dollar Tree. Uh, one of my followers made this for me, which is like a finger that you can use. Um, it's got glue all over it, but that does not matter. So when you put the glue onto your quilt batting, it gets smoking hot. So just be super careful. And I'm just gonna put just a teeny bit. These trees are not gonna get handled much, so they don't need a ton of glue on them. And then I'm just gonna lay my little finger down and roll it over the glue. That also seems to make it kind of disappear um, into the lace, and then I'll just pull all this check off of here. So. Okay, let's do the whole thing, and I'm just doing the very outside edges. I don't think you need to do anything else. So do you guys like my new setup here? Um, so basically, I put some contact paper on my, de on my craft desk, and then I have, I got a new tripod with a microphone, I hope the sound is better, and a new um, ring light. And coming in the next day or two, I have two new side lights. So I'm just trying to step up my game here for you guys so that these videos are better quality. And I get bored too, so I'm always wanting to change things around a little. Okay, so I have this glued on the sides. I'm gonna do one quick little row here on the bottom. And then I'm just gonna roll my finger through it. This is my finger in case you're wondering. And then I'll clean all these globs of glue off of it. You know, if not right now, in a little bit, it just comes right off. Okay, so here's our piece of quilt batting. And then this is, you know, elementary. I'm just gonna trim it. So use whatever kind of lace you have or like. Um, or it could even be some tool that you could use. Or you could just wrap some strings of lace around your tree. Um, I like doing a variety of different things. And I'll show you that again when I hold up my trees again in just a second. So here's our piece. I know my light is a little bright. I'm gonna have to experiment with it. Can you guys see? I don't know, I think you can. Okay, so then the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna attach our back to it and I'm just looking to see which way did it go when I cut it out this way. All right, and I'm gonna put my glue on the canvas deck and not on the, um, the batting. Hey, Frida, hi, Cindy. Hi, Hazel from Hickory, North Carolina. Thanks, Brenda, I appreciate that. I like when you work with color cloth materials, you have good idea, oh, with cloth materials, thank you. Um, you know, my philosophy here at DIY Dreaming is to, I'm always gonna be my authentic self and do the crafts that appeal to me. But most of them can be adapted. Like if you are, I have a friend, Miss Susie, who she loves 
more jewel tone colors. She loves, if I remember right, a lot of teal and plum and um, turquoise and, you know, the, that kind of more jewel tone colors. And that's what she has in her decor. And so you can just take whatever ideas you see here that you like and do them in your own style. That's the point of everything. I'll do it in my style for the most part when I'm showing you here live. And then you can take this idea and adapt it to whatever you like. And by the way, oh, you guys are so nice. Hi, Judy from Pinch, West Virginia. Colleen says that's her colors. Um, I'm more of a boring neutral girl in general. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Hmm, it, it left me. Anyway, so just, oh yeah, I know, remember. Um, I do have a group that I set up a couple years ago here on Facebook called Dreamy, D-I-Y, and it's a place for you to share pictures of the crafts that you do. So if you're interested in seeing tons of ideas or in having a place to share your craft pictures, your projects, you know, and have some other crafters say, yay, good job. It's Dreamy, D-I-Y. And be sure to answer the questions. Don't share, um, be nice. Don't share uh, other crafters' videos, please. Don't do that. Because I, it's, I get questions about how things were done when it's another crafter and I don't even know. So um, don't share other crafters' videos. And then uh, be nice and don't use that place as a place to sell whatever, you know, you might have going on. Okay, so I'm just going over to my drawer to grab some fluff. And you, with these trees, you can stuff them super full, just a little full, not full at all, uh, whatever you like. I do see, I think I like this fill better than anything I've had in a while. Oops, I see some places where, I, well, I maybe didn't get it glued down good. Or I guess I did. Um, I'm not going to do this super full. Let me show you that fill. Okay, this is Walmart. Um, I don't remember what the price was, but it wasn't terrible. Polyfill Crafter's Choice Dry Polyester Packing Fiber Fill. And then it said it's great for dolls. But it's kind of stiff. And that's what I like about it. Um, okay, so, and I showed you earlier the sticks, the wood dowels that we're going to use. I'm just going to put one in here. We're going to jazz this puppy a little bit up a little bit more when we get done with this part. Okay, and then we're just going to glue it closed. I'm going to put some fuzz or fluff around the pole. And we're just making a sandwich. What is the best way to store all your paste? I'm thinking you're asking about chalk paste. Um, store it right side up for sure. And I just have mine in a drawer. And you're going to want to uh, periodically give them a little mist of um, distilled water. That helps keep them nice and moist. You know, um, chalk paste is made with chalk, which is some chemical something or other. But its, it's natural state is dry. So it's going to kind of always want to dry out. And you're just going to be fighting that, that fight by adding water to it, um, distilled water to it continuously. Okay, I want to get some more. Oh, I got these out. Okay, so let's, let's add some of this to the bottom. It's super cute. And I'm going to do it on the side with the lace, obviously. Last year, last winter Christmas time, 
we made a bunch of different stuffed Christmas trees. What is different about these is that they're all kind of a natural color. Last year, I did um, a ton of all over pattern stencils on, dip, on painter's drop cloth and on um, canvas duck fabric. And I'll show you an example because I do have a tree here that I was fiddling around with this morning. It does still look pretty neutral to go with this theme, but it's one that I stenciled to create my own, you know, fabric. Okay, so here's the little bottom to it, and I'm just gonna, I need to get my scissors sharpened. I mean, you, and you could go 10 more steps further with this. Uh, you, if you want, you could, if you're a bling girl, this is just a little blingy rhinestone uh, pin. Or you could do something like this. The, this is another bling. So if you're a bling kind of person, you could put some bling on it. Um, you could do some various buttons on the top. Uh, it's totally up to you. Okay, let's do one more and then let me show you the secret part. And that, well, there's two ways. There's one way that you've seen a lot, I'm sure, if you ever look on Pinterest. There's a way to stand your trees up that we'll talk about. But I'm gonna show you two ways that I have found that don't involve me getting a drill out. Because our drill that we have is like 900 years old and it's, it's difficult. <laughs> Okay, let's do this big one. You know what, let me think. No, let's do the smaller one, just for sake of time. And I will come back and do the bigger one later. Okay, so I'm gonna glue this one together because it's just um, the canvas deck and then we'll decorate the front of it. whiz through this one. Rhonda says she loves it. Oh wow, you have almost 800 viewers. Wow, hey everyone. You know what, if you are new, please tell me in the comments so I can say hi and see your name and be looking for you in future lives. Um, if you like this idea, Tell me that in the comments. If you have an idea of how you would adapt this to your style, like if you're a turquoise or teal or uh, purple kind of person or whatever it is, tell me that too, because I want more ideas as well. Okay, it's glued together. Let's do some, let's see, what should we do? Let's do some buttons and a little row of this lace. This, I believe, came from Hobby Lobby. It says it was $2.99. I'm sure I didn't pay $2.99 for it. I'm sure I bought it on one of those deals when they had lace on sale or ribbons on sale because I'm frugal. But, um, okay, and you can put your lace to go all the way around the tree for example, this or this, but for now, I'm just gonna put it on the front. Okay, okay let's get these sides off. We need to trim this top because that is a crazy looking top of a Christmas tree. All right, here we go. We're gonna add, the, and it's glued together just in case you're wondering. We're gonna do the buttons next. And I have a bunch out that 
I was just digging through my button collection yesterday looking for a bunch of little mother of pearl ones that are all kind of different. I don't know if you're like me, but I could look through my button stash for hours. <laughs> Tell me in the comments if you are a button lover too. My favorites are for sure the Mother of Pearl ones. Okay, I've pulled out a variety. And you can put as many on as you want or not. All right, look at this pretty one. You see how that's carved? Let's put that at the top. Okay, see, I just got glue on my hand and it, it really doesn't even hurt when it's the right kind when it's something like this. I'm just doing a random pattern. The first couple ones that I made with buttons, I did sort of obsess a little bit with placement, and then I just got over myself <laughs> and realized that it absolutely does not matter. It's gonna look super cute, just, sometimes it's fun to just put a couple really close. It's gonna look super cute no matter what. And I will, I'm gonna melt all these glue strings after the tree is all stuffed and fluffed. But look, look how many glue strings are on there. <laughs> Pull a few of these off. Okay, and this is a smaller, shorter tree. So I'm not gonna use a full long uh, dowel. You can get them in all different lengths. This is just what I happen to have from Walmart. And so, I'm not gonna use my good sewing scissors to cut it. I'm gonna use one of these. This works just fine. Just to basically pinch it and then I can pull it apart. We'll put this sharp part up in the, up in the tree. Okay, let's do a little stuff in the fourth, the top. So stay with me because the next thing I'm gonna show you, you guys, is really cool. It's an alternative way to create a base for these Christmas trees. And I have a couple variations to tell you about. Um, and chances are you probably have what you need on hand. I'm also gonna show you the Dollar Tree thing. But the one, I mean, they both look great. Okay, so now I'm just gonna stick my dowel, twist it into the fluff. So this tree did not look like anything special when I cut it out, did it? And it's leaning to one side. I don't have too much fluff in it. Uh, but it's super cute now. Oh my gosh, it's adorable. Okay, I didn't see what Ruth said. Oh, Ruth said she has buttons from three generations. Oh my gosh, that is my dream. But you know what? Um, a few of you guys have sent me some of those kind of heirloom type of treasures and I 
just love that kind of stuff. Like I've had a few people send me buttons. Um, a few people sent me vintage quilts or pieces, cutters is what they're called. Um, and a few people sent me some of the most beautiful lace uh, and different kinds of doilies and hankies. And then my friend Dixie a long time ago sent me um, this beautiful box filled with all these vintage wood thread spools. So I, I love that kind of stuff that has history. Isn't it cute? Okay, let's move on to the next thing. Um, and I'll come back and do this one later. Let me see if I can find my desk under all of this. Okay, how do we want to stand these guys up? Well, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. Um, one is to take something like this. It's a little wood piece. You can get these at Dollar Tree. And get your drill out and drill a hole. And then you can put your tree into that. And that is a cute base, but you do need to have a drill. I don't think there's any way you could glue this on here and just have it be stable enough. So you're gonna, or you could maybe use a large nail and pound a hole in it. But both of those things require um, stuff from the garage and I didn't feel like it. Okay, so that's one idea. Another idea is similar and that is to take one of these wood slices. These beautiful ones are from magnoliadiy.com. Magnoliadiy.com. You get a package of 10 and they're, they're smooth. They're not uh, like I bought these other places where they're super rough because I don't know they didn't use a good saw or something But anyways, you can make a little hole in these and use this as your base We're gonna do a lot of crafts with these uh, during winter and Christmas Okay, another option is to take a vintage um, Wood uh, thread spool and to use that and you can just put some hot glue in it we'll fiddle around with that in just a second in fact we might fiddle around with that right now a while back I ordered I couldn't find any of these this was before my friend Dixie sent me this box of vintage wood thread spools so I ordered these on Amazon um, I'll have to see if I can find the link. And they came three different sizes of little, they're like wood spools. Can you guys see? My fingers are in the way. Uh, they weren't very expensive. And let's see how this medium size would work. I think that would be great. Okay, um, so I am gonna take one of these. I need a bigger one. Okay, and I'm going to put the bottom of this tree into this medium size spool. Now this is not the, this is not the big idea that I wanna show you. So stay with me, that'll be next. But this is really cute. So I'm just gonna fill my little hole here up with some glue and stick my tree in there. Hope that it's pretty straight. Okay, and you're gonna get a blob at the bottom. I'm just gonna smoosh that off. And maybe you noticed before I came live that I had this one in the similar idea. It's a, the larger spool. Well, a cute thing to do is to put two or three of these Christmas trees on one of these wood bases. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'm just gonna offset them just a little bit. This will give it some stability and you could come back and, you know, do something fun with the base, add some glitter, uh, put, you know, some fabric on it, paint it. There's a lot of different things that you could do. 
but we're just gonna do it to this point. And then I'm gonna show you the other idea, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's glue this one on right here. And this could be pretty darn cute sitting on a shelf. What do you think about that? These are the new thread spools from Amazon. This is one that I put together beforehand that has three trees on it. And I used the vintage uh, wood thread spools. You can see this is just a variety of three different kinds of trees. So what do you guys think about these ideas? I think they're pretty cute. Okay, so that is one idea. Oh, and by the way, before I jump ahead, um, remember I was telling you that you can also make your own fabric using some stencils from magnoliadiy.com and some ink and the same canvas duck. And this is the start of one that I am making. The back is just the plain. The front is a piece of canvas duck fabric that I stenciled with a Victorian pattern stencil from magnoliadiy.com and some silver ink. And I have some of these little teeny get a big one, silver bells that came off of a garland. You know how I say, use what you have whenever possible? I really do do that. <laughs> Whatever I have, if I don't mind cutting it up, um, I will use it on a future project, especially if it's not something that I've used on a tree in a while. So you could add a bunch of these um, to your tree. But look how cute that is. I will finish this one off camera and get pictures. This is reminding me of, do you guys remember? Not very long ago when I showed you how to make this. This is that same fabric. Uh, same, um, same Victorian pattern all over stencil, same silver ink. Isn't that cute? Okay, and this over here, where is it? It's underneath a few other craft projects. That same day that we made that little stand with the little dragonfly, we also made this. So we do some really fun things here at DIY Dreaming. Um, I really try to change things up all the time so you don't get bored. Um, and this is really, this is like the best example of what my style is in general. I do tons of faith, tons of family, and lots of flowers. And then also some Christmas trees. But um, that video where I showed how to make that is available here at DIY Dreaming Under Videos if you want. So that's just an example of how you could, you know, do your own thing if you want to make your own fabric. Okay, so here's the surprise. All right, these two trees right here have something in the bottom of them that to me, it looks like when you buy a live tree and they have the roots all covered in dirt and then covered in cloth, sometimes when you get a Christmas tree, you can purchase them that way and then put them in your yard after the season is over so you don't have to, you know, have a tree cut down. That's what this reminds me of, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Oh, by the way, when I mentioned... I'll put these here so you can see. Uh, when I mentioned um, that I was doing this project and I had you guys give me some guesses of what we were making, only one or two people got the answer right that we were going to be making uh, Christmas trees. I thought that was funny. Most of you guys guessed that we were going to be making flowers, which we do that all the time. So we can just do something a little bit different here and there. Okay, so I'm coming back to my canvas duck fabric. You could use whatever you want, but this is what I'm going to use. And I am going to cut, let's 
flip this over because it's yucky. I'm going to cut a big circle, a circle-ish. It doesn't have to be really anything precise because you can come back and trim it. And I'll measure this in just a second because I know there's people out there that want to know the measurements for the crafts I'm doing. This I'm just eyeballing. It might be too big. When I made this one, it was much smaller. And that is when I learned that maybe it would be better to have it be bigger and then adjust down. So, okay. So what do you suppose is gonna go in this? Can you see very well? I don't think you can. Maybe I'll come back to the shaky side. Any guesses? Okay, you guys, ignore that comment from that hacker that was just on, and please don't call or respond to anyone who posts things like contact me or become my friend. Sorry. Um, okay, so did anyone guess what I'm gonna put inside here? Well, I just went to, in my basement, I have multiple tubs of decorating fluff because I like to swap things out for the seasons in my house. And I did that much more before I did all this crafting. But um, anyway, so I have a whole tub that has beach, seashells, and um, kind of nautical <sighs> type of elements. And so I got out a bag of sand. This one also has some sand dollars in it, which we're not gonna use, the sand dollars, but we are going to use the sand. Um, if you're using a loosely woven fabric, then you might want to put a plastic bag in the center. This canvas duck is pretty sturdy, and I haven't seen any of the sand fall out of the bottom. And I'm just using a coffee scoop to use what I have. That's what I always say. Use what you have whenever possible. I don't, probably don't need that much, I don't know. And then I'm just gonna pull the edges up. Let's add a little bit more. It's gonna be for this tree, so I don't know. I think maybe this will be fine and I'll just cut the top of it down a little bit. I might have gone a little crazy with the, with the top being so big. So I pulled up four corners and then I'm gonna pull these other points up and try to hang on to everything. And fill it. No, I think it needs a little more. Sorry. Let's just do one more scoop. And we'll do the same thing. You're just gathering all the points into the center. And pull everything up as tight as I can get it. And I got some rubber bands out. Uh, I think this is the easiest thing to do, but you could just use some twine. Don't tie it, if you're gonna tie it, don't tie it so tightly shut that you can't get your pole in there, your um, wood dowel. We're gonna cover this up, so don't worry about the yellow thing. Let me stick my tree in here and let's see how, how much we think we need to cut off of this stuff around it. I think a good bit because mostly you're seeing this. If you had some pinking shears, you could use that. I may not be able to cut this whole thing all at once. I 
And I think probably the messier, the better. Okay, where's the hole? <laughs> Into the center. Where is that? Is that it? Yes. Okay, so now I'm just going to stick my tree in there. And, da da da! Isn't that cute? Okay, now we're not done. I got out, I mean, honestly, you could do whatever you want to embellish this. I just got out some uh, creamy colored yarn that looks um, like it would match this perfectly. It, um, it's, you could use twine, you could use ribbon. This is just what I'm using because this is what I have on hand and it's the to me, I want this to all be monochromatic. Okay, so I'm just going to cut off a good long piece. And then we'll go front and back and front and back a few times. And pull it tight, and this is covering up that rubber band. That's too tight. Okay, and we can tie either a knot or a um, bow. So there's that one. This is one that, the one that I made earlier, which is, on retrospect, it probably needs a little bit more sand in it, but I put a bow on it. So let me move all this junk out of the way and show you what we did one more time, if you have questions let me know. If you wanted to look at any of that um, stuff that I mentioned earlier from Magnolia, the website's easy to remember. It's magnoliadiy.com. Um, so here's the three trees that I did that have the surprise, the sand in a little pouch. You could also use lima beans, peas, little tiny gravel, you know, anything like that that's going to be heavy and dense. You could put that inside your little pouches. What do you think? Pretty cute, huh? And then um, this is the tree set that we made. And here's the one that I made before I came live, where we put them in these little wood thread spools. These ones are new. They're from Amazon. These are vintage. They're actual thread spools. So, there are just so many fun things that you could do with this idea, and I wanna know what you guys think. Did you like it? Was it worth waiting an extra day while I felt better? I hope so. And thank you for all your sweet comments. <laughs> I was just not feeling great yesterday. Anyways, I'm great now. Uh, so, if you like this idea, sprinkle, 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 especially if you have friends, keep in mind that you can do this whole entire thing um, with your choice of fabrics, your choice of decorations, colors, colored buttons, wooden buttons, metal buttons, different trims, different laces, um, all to suit your style and your colors. All right, well, that's it for this project. I do plan to hop back on live in a few minutes, so be looking for me again because I have something else to show you. All right, have a wonderful day. I'm gonna step back and let you guys take a screenshot of this if you would like. And, does it look decent? I don't know. And then I'll say goodbye for real and I'll get pictures looks pretty cute I think and you know this <laughs> I forgot to mention this earlier this was a notebook project that we made um, 
gosh, at least two months ago where we made these little bits and pieces that we put on top of the um, fabric deck fabric that we covered the front of our notebook with. And so these kind of projects are like some of my favorites to do. So if you're brand new, um, take two seconds up here to look and see if you've liked and followed DIY Dreaming. Do a this or this or say something in the comments and all those things seem to, oh, and you can set your notifications too if you would like, but they seem to increase the odds. There's no guarantees with Facebook. Increase the odds that you might see what I am doing next. So if you want to see that, and tomorrow is Christ and Crafting, and it's going to be good. So I hope you'll join me for that too. All right, see you guys later. One last thing, if you decide to make any of these stuffed Christmas trees in your style, in your colors to go in your decor, or like this, I would love to see pictures either here in the comments or over at that page I mentioned earlier, the page that I set up, uh, it's a group, a Facebook group for us to share pictures of our craft projects, and that includes all of you guys. It's Dreamy DIY, and I'd love to see what you do there. All right, have a wonderful uh, rest of your day. If you don't happen to join me for the next thing, if you are gonna join me for the next thing, I'll see you in a few minutes. Bye.